This week in Black People Shit, Survival of the Fittest. I'm your host, Christy Ferris. This week, ex-NFL quarterback Michael Vick was on the Fox Sports program The Herd with Jason Whitlock to discuss a myriad of topics, one of them being the current predicament of Colin Kaepernick. When asked what he thought Colin should do to try to get on an NFL roster, Vic said that he should cut his hair and change his image if he wants to get a job. So to be expected, social media, radio hosts, and news pundits jumped all over Vic calling him everything from a coon to being in the sunken place. And I have to say, I'm kind of conflicted about how I feel about this. On one hand, I'm in agreement with everybody because Colin Kaepernick didn't do anything wrong to not be on an NFL team. As a matter of fact, he did everything right. So why should he have to cut his hair or change anything for that matter? But on the other hand, isn't what Vic says something we all do? And even what we teach our kids to do? So if Vic is in the sunken place, then aren't we all? Because we all code switch and act differently when we're around white people. I mean, I remember when I was 16 years old and I was hanging out with my white friends. As soon as my black girlfriends came up, all of a sudden I switched that mess up. Yo, what's up? How you been? And as soon as my black friends left, my white girlfriend said, Wow, Christy, you're so different when you're around your black friends. And she was right. Now, before you start going in on me, I absolutely understand that there is a difference in what Colin and Vic were trying to say. Vic was talking about how to get a job, whereas Colin was talking about systemic racism and standing up for the right of black and brown people in this country who seem to be under assault by the police. Black people in this country are at a point where we have to give our kids a step-by-step -step instruction on how to behave when they encounter the police. Like, always show your hands, be respectful, have your identification, and don't make any sudden moves. Because our main concern is that they survive. But in a very simple and unsophisticated way, Vic was saying the same thing. Do what you have to do to survive. Whether it's cut your hair, don't wear braids, or wear a suit, or speak properly, pull your pants up, or even hands up, don't shoot. Our techniques may be different, but our message is the same. Look at Procter & Gamble, who recently premiered a commercial about racial bias. In the commercial, it shows several mothers in several different time periods talking to their children about discrimination. And what seems to take place in our current time, you can see a mother in a car talking to her daughter who is just learning to drive. When the daughter tries to reassure her mother that she is a good driver, the mother says, this isn't about you getting a ticket. This is about you coming home. I know that in this country, black people are constantly put in a position where we have to compromise adjust and even give up a little bit of our dignity in order to survive. You protest loudly, you get attacked. You take a knee, you get attacked. You stand on principle, you lose your job. You shuck and jive, you lose your job. We get hit in every direction no matter what we do. So even though I may not agree with all of Vic's message, I can at least respect a black man telling another black man, hey, whatever you do, survive. I'm Christy Ferris and this was This Week in Black People Shit. You can leave your comments below because I know y'all got some.